What is up, everybody out there in Heroclix land? This, once again, is Scott Porter. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy 2020. A new decade is upon us, and I am here this week to do a new unboxing series for the Marvel Heroclix set, Captain America and the Avengers. We have not seen a Captain America-based set since, I think, 2011, I think was the last Captain America set. Uh, triumphant return for uh, WizKids coming back, selling out product back in the day. The Captain America set was huge. If I remember correctly, that Captain America set had a lot to do with S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, a lot of, you know, miscellaneous Captain America characters. Of course, the Avengers were ever-present in that set, and I think that they will be today. Um, let's take a quick look at the outside here. We got Cap on the front, on the side. Let's see, we've got, uh, ooh, what is, Immortal Hulk. Oh my God, that's like Penny Dreadful meets the Hulk. We've got Black Panther on the other side. We've got Sam Wilson as Captain America. We've got Captain Marvel and on the back. Usually where we get a little bit of a hint here on the back of uh, what the chases might be, it's just a bunch of Avengers. So not quite sure... Uh, what we're going to have as chases. I guess we could have a Black Panther, Doctor Strange, Captain America, Iron Man, Captain Marvel chases. Why not? It would make sense for them, some of their biggest characters. Um, oh, man. I know Christmas just got done, but again, it just feels like Christmas Day whenever I get to open a new brick. And here we go. Woo! All right, I'll take these puppies out. Today, I'm just going to be having uh, basically the boosters and uh, a couple of other things as table decorations. I know I usually have um, a lot of different statues and stuff, but a bunch of my stuff is in storage. And uh, unfortunately, this is just going to have to do. We once again are here at Hyper RPG Studios in beautiful uh, Universal Studios, uh, Universal City, uh, California. I think that's what they call this area that the studio is in now. And uh, thank you to them so much for allowing us to be here and shoot here. Thank you so much to WizKids for uh, starting my year off in the right way and sending me this set. Uh, with the Captain America set, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what the sub themes are. Um, if you've never watched one of these unboxing series before, it's pretty quick, it's pretty dirty. We're just going to crack these open, take a quick look at the figures, take a, a full look at the cards, and then uh, we'll do two boosters a day each day for the entirety of the week. Um, all right, I guess without further ado, um, do we want to start with the boosters or do we want to start with the, the token pack? Should we start with it since they sent it to us this time? Sure, why not? Let's take out the dice and token pack real quick. Take a quick uh, look at what they are up close here. Ooh, yeah. We've got some bystander tokens on the back of this token pack here. All right, let's see. The first two, we've got Cap and Sam as Cap. Take them out and flip them over. Ooh, let's see. Oh, yeah. We've got Becky Barnes. We've got a Simuloid there. We've got a Becky Barnes there. Let's see these other tokens. Got Iron Man on one side. On the back of that, we've got uh, a robot dupe. Ooh, all right, we're getting a little sneak preview here. We got Jane Foster as Thor here. We've got Chewie. Oh, this is great. So I'm guessing we're going to see some of these characters on cards and you'll be able to use these tokens as their bystanders as well. We've got Immortal Hulk on that side. Opposite of that, we got another Simuloid, and we got Carol Danvers, and on the back side of that, one more Simuloid, so we've got a number of those to work with. So a little sneak peek of the figures we're going to get in the set just based off of the uh, bystander tokens that we got there. We got some new Avengers dice. I like rounded-sided dice usually. I like ones that roll a little bit. These are a little bit better. They're not as harsh uh, as with, you know, angularly as the uh, other dice sets. They look great, though. Let's see. Oh, I rolled a four. Terrible. Come on. Got to do better than that. They'd go, in the, they'd go in the bin. Not using those today. Um, we also got the Fast Forces pack, and I don't usually open them, but uh, maybe we'll take a quick look at Fast Forces here before we start cracking into the official, uh, the official set here. So let's see. Uh, we got Captain America and the Avengers. 
Just a Fast Forces set, a normal Fast Forces set. Inside it looks like we've got some cool figures. I'm, I'm guessing we're going to have pretty much every single character that has ever been Captain America or carried the Captain America shield. Um, I don't know if we're going to have you know, some figures in the future. It looks like we've got, I think we've got Isaiah there. Isaiah Bradley, I think. Uh, we've got Citizen V. Got a very cap mentality to him. I'm guessing that's going to be the original one. We've got Bucky. We've got Hawkeye there. We've got an Iron Man. And we've got Captain America Steve Rogers himself. Uh, let's see. All right. Here we go. Crack it open. You know, you can usually get some really useful figures out of these uh, Fast Forces boxes. That's probably going to be the set. Usually pretty economical versions of some of your favorite characters. And uh, they, of course, will have another figure in the set that does something probably a little bit more uh, in-depth. So, let's see here. It's like we've got that kind of Marvel Now, new kind of looking Iron Man there, Citizen V, Cap himself, and uh, yeah, it is Isaiah. I wonder if we're going to get Josiah in this set. Um, we've gotten Isaiah before, I believe. We've gotten uh, Iron Patriot a few times, of course. Um, we've gotten the grandson as well. So I just wonder if we're going to see um, Josiah. Uh, you know, he was around for a long time, told his backstory, uh, a bunch of baby switching and egg stealing and all that stuff. But we'll see if we get Josiah X in this set. That would be really cool to get some first timers. Um, we'll take a look at the cards real quick. We will start with, uh, let's start with Hawkeye here. Okay, Hawkeye. Avengers, Thunderbolts, Martial Artist. He comes in at, let's see, 30, uh, 35 or 50 points. He's got a trait called Assembled Avengers. Once per turn, when Hawkeye hits after resolutions, you may roll a D6. On a 5 or a 6, if your force has 3 plus friendly characters to the Avengers keyword, remove an action token from Hawkeye or give an action token to a hit target. If your force has 6 plus, do both. Holy wow, that is an awesome shared trait. He's got a special attack power because Boomerang, once per turn when Hawkeye misses with a range attack targeting a single opposing character. After resolutions, he may make a range attack against the same target, modifying attack by plus 1. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that is so cool. I'm actually like super excited that that's a power. I can't wait to play with this Hawkeye, especially at that low point of a cost. He's got a 12, uh, a starting attack value. As I flip over the card here, you can see the stats. Running shot with a 12 attack, plus he's got that boomerang effect going on uh, with that special power there. He's got a 13 attack on the way back. He's got three damage. Uh, so if he misses, you know, you might have a chance to just up it and. I don't know how often he's going to miss with that 12 attack, but, you know, who knows? Maybe he will. All right, moving on. We'll take a closer look here at, uh, I don't know, let's take a look at Winter Soldier if we can. Again, these are the characters out of the Fast Forces pack. We haven't even busted into the boosters yet. Can't wait for that to happen. Winter Soldier, let's see. Um, we've got... A trait called reposition after the shot when Winter Soldier makes a range attack after resolutions move him up to three squares. That's like a super sidestep after sniping. He's got the Assembled Avengers trait as well. He's got a special move power locating the target running shot, sidestep, and stealth. He is super mobile and it's pretty great. Um, they've always done such an awesome job. From the very first time we saw uh, the Winter Soldier in Heroclix form back in like 2008 or 2007 with the sniping and the super strength. They've done a great job of showing multiple elements of what Winter Soldier can do and why he is so dangerous. So that is a great figure. These are actually really, really solid. We've got Citizen V. It is, I believe, the original Citizen V, John Watkins III. Actually, no, I think that's the newer Citizen V. Uh, the first, he's, he's got a V Battalion and soldier keywords, he comes in at 75 points. He's set number two. Let's see. 
living legend. The first time each game, Citizen V would be KO'd. Instead, turn him to his last non-KO click, then roll a D6 and heal him equal to half the result, protected against Pulse Wave. He has a special movement power, Stealth Suit and V-Wing Charge, Sidestep, Stealth, and Flight, of which he can carry no passengers with him. Okay, let's see the back of his card, see what his stats look like here. He's got that special power for the first three clicks. A little combat reflexes, a little toughness. Shape change. Now, Citizen V, if you'll remember, um, that identity was actually taken over by Helmet Zemo uh, for a while, Baron Zemo with the Thunderbolt. So I would expect having him in this Fast Forces pack means we're going to have a lot of Thunderbolts in the main set. We will see. It didn't say anything on the outside of the brick, but uh, we're getting there. All right, moving on to Iron Man. This Iron Man is that black and gold kind of suit from uh, Marvel Now and Beyond. Uh, he's got Avengers, Stark Industries, Armor and Scientist keywords. Fast Forces number five comes in at 75 or 50 points. You can play him at two different values there. He's got the Assembled Avengers shared trait. He's got the Avengers team player defend power, defend and invulnerability. He's got a special damage power called here to help with everything Stark Industries has. And power enhancement probability control. And Iron Man with probability control? Come on, man. They already give this dude enough things. That's, well, you know, whatever. Why not? Here we go. Uh, some sidestep there. No running shot off the bat. Um, does have telekinesis <coughs> as well. Definitely a new power set for me for an Iron Man. He's got a specialized suit there that, that can do telekinesis. So uh, the jack of all trades, Iron Man, strikes again. He, this one now has probability control and telekinesis. If you love Iron Man and you want to play any power in the game, you can, you can do that. You can pick a single Iron Man anywhere in the game and he can fill whatever role you need on your team. Uh, that's pretty rad. All right. <clears throat> Sorry if I cough and alive. I'm just getting over something. You know, that New Year's funk everybody gets. All right. We'll go with Isaiah next. And I do want to pop him up here. Uh, we haven't seen Isaiah in a while. Just uh, take a closer look at the figure here. Um, he looks pretty good, man. He's got that old, that old school shield. I love the, the story of Isaiah. <clears throat> Bradley and how, how well it was written and then Josiah's story as well. It's, it's so compelling and I, I really do hope that we see uh, Josiah in here. But this is Isaiah. He looks great. I'll take a look at his card real quick. Uh, Isaiah, he has the living legend trait as well, with, which we just saw on Citizen V. He also has a trait called Experimental Super American Super Soldier. He has Colossal Stamina. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. There's Truth. That was back in 2003. Man, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. He's got a shorter dial there. He's only 25 points. Can still deal some damage. He's indomitable and has colossal stamina. So the guy can just keep on attacking and attacking and attacking. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep pushing. That's awesome. All right. The Captain America in this Fast Forces set is Steve Rogers. There have been a lot of people that have been taking up the mantle of Cap lately. He comes in at 75 points, has the living legend trait, has follow-up as a special attack power when Captain America hits with a range attack. After resolutions, you may place Captain America adjacent to the hit character and then make a close attack. <clears throat> Take a look at his stats real quick. He's got some running shot. He's got that special attack power on the first three clicks. Steady all the way down the dial. I don't know why they just don't trait leadership all the time on Cap. I feel like he is the one person that deserves to always have traded leadership. To have it on the dial is a little weird to me. But again, that's the Fast Forces, so they're somewhat uh, more simplified versions of the characters we know and we love. All right. I think pre-releases for this thing start January the 22nd. Um, so you're getting a, a pretty good look ahead of time as to what might be in this set. And uh, without further ado, we're going to break open these first two boosters to see what you might be playing with at those pre-releases. And then, of course, with the set releasing at the end of January, early February. All right. These were the two on the back right side of the, 
the brick. Anybody who watches these videos a lot knows that that's where I like to start. You usually find a super rare somewhere in there or a, a prime or something. Hoping the same thing happens uh, today, but uh, who knows? Um, it's, it's way less obvious what the chases are going to be in this set, but um, oh my gosh. Wait a minute. Yep. All right. Pulled a super rare right out of the gate. I don't know if you guys can see. Here we go. We've got Spider-Man. But if you notice that suit, that's the Spider-Man from the uh, Insomniac games. That's a super rare there. All right, let's pop him out. Let's get some close-up of these guys. All right, we've got Spider-Man, a super rare version of him. I think he showed up in Spider-Geddon, uh, which is which was a surprise for me, but very, very cool. We've got Winter Soldier. Okay, so we're getting our first peek at what the main set version of a Fast Forces character might be. Uh, we've got another Citizen V here, which is great. And we've got Quake and Roz Solomon. And I don't think we've ever seen Roz Solomon before. So we're getting some very strong shield vibes right in this first booster. Maybe that's going to be a subset here, or a sub-theme uh, as we go through. Let's pull them back. Let's take a look at their cards. Of course, we'll look at that Spider-Man last. Now, the reason I'm so excited about seeing this Spider-Man in Heroclix form is because uh, uh, your boy was in the game. I was in the Spider-Man game. If you've played it, I am Harry Osborn in that game. So uh, anytime I see that particular suited Spider-Man, I have a, a vested personal interest in it, and it, uh, it makes me smile and gets me very, very giddy. All right, let's start with Ross Solomon. We've never seen her before in a Heroclix set. Take a quick peek at what she looks like here. All right, yeah, looking good. She's in that black and red, the uh, Agents of Wakanda uh, color uh, type of suit now. All right, let's see. Ross Solomon, set number 21. She comes in at 65 points. She has Asgardian, S.H.I.E.L.D., Wakanda, Scientist, and Spy. She has Asgardian because of all the work that she did uh, with Thor. She was kind of an environmental uh, soldier for S.H.I.E.L.D. or officer for S.H.I.E.L.D. And she had a lot of storylines with Thor. Very cool. If you haven't read them, go check them out. I think one of them had to do with uh, space water uh, fighting. I think it was Roxxon. I think was, was it Roxxon? I think she was. they were trying to sell uh, ice water from... Uh, one of the moons of Europa, I think, one of the moons of Saturn or Jupiter, and uh, Thor just shows up with a giant bit of uh, space water from uh, Niflheim. Is that the frozen planet? I can't remember the name of it, but he shows up with this giant rock, basically, from the land of the frost giants, and is like, I'll just give you this for free. You don't have to pay rocks on for a bunch of space water. Don't worry about it. And that was a lot of the work between Roz and Thor. They have a really cool storyline. Anyway, all right, back to the card. Uh, Asgardian Shield, Wakanda Scientist Spy. She has a trait, espionage. She has stealth. She ignores hindering terrain for movement and for targeting. She has vibranium bullets. So, yeah, Wakanda coming in hot. Uh, when Roz Solomon makes a range attack, her target's defense values cannot be positively modified. Oh, that's awesome. Sees right through all that all the perplex and everything. Celestial Tech is a movement power she has, phasing and teleport. Once per game, when Ross Solomon uses it, she may carry an opposing character. Ooh, kind of a, a little whiff of the old Nightcrawler there. She can pick up an opposing character and she can take that character wherever she wants, probably into a kill box, or sorry, KO box uh, in this game. Some good stats on the back there. Agents of Wakanda, very cool book. If you haven't seen it, uh, go check it out. She is solid, as can be, for 65 points. What a great start to this set. All right, Roz, well done. Uh, we'll move on to Citizen V here, take a quick look at the figure. All right, looks the exact same as the Fast Forces pack. Let's see which character this actually is, though, because a lot of people have had the mantle of Citizen V over time. Um, this one is John Watkins III, again, uh, Living Legend is that trait we talked about earlier. Uh, where they can come back to life and uh, do a little heel roll. And another trait called Peak of Human Conditioning, Sidestep and Toughness. Take a look at the stats here on the back. 
nothing too crazy. Got blades there for that sword in his hand. It's always funny to me when a figure has a sword on it but does not have blades, claws, fangs. Literally in the power, blades, claws, fangs. Uh, we'll take a look at Winter Soldier, who we also saw at the Fast Forces pack. A little bit of a more close-up look. He's doing some serious lunging punch with his mechanical arm. Still looking good. All right. Got the wild card team ability here. Comes in at 90 points. 15, set number 15 in the set. You've got Winter Soldier, Avengers, Hydra, Invaders, Shield, Thunderbolts, Assassin, Soldier, Spy, Tinker, Taylor. No, they, they're not in there, but you know, you get it. Um, he's got the trait Assembled Bolts and Masters. Oh. So not Avengers Assembled, but Assembled Bolts and Masters. It reads the exact same as the Avengers Assembled, though. Once per turn, when a soldier hits, after resolutions, you roll a d6. If your force has three plus friendly characters with the Masters of Evil or Thunderbolts keywords, remove an action token from Winter Soldier or give an action to a hit target. If your force has six plus, do both. He also has the espionage trait that Roz had. He has a special damage power efficient and ruthless application of force close combat expert, range combat expert. Man, whoo, this particular Winter Soldier has all the bells and whistles. Six click dial, it's a little shorter than we've seen in the past. Still, running shot, outwit, the special power, being indomitable, good stats pretty much all the way down. That nine attack we don't love to see on Winter Soldier, but. Still, this piece is pretty wicked. Um, man, ah, that Avengers Assembled and Assembled Bolts and Masters power, you're going to have so much uh, action regeneration going on, on top of the fact that you've got these living legends on the board that when you KO them, they come back onto the board and get to go back to the middle of their dial. You know, we're looking at how much these figures cost to play, but you're getting so much more out of them now, it's really hard for old pieces to keep up anymore. Because when you KO an old piece, it's gone. But now there are so many of these uh, rebirth type characters that you KO them, you're hoping to get them off the board, and now they show back up, and if they roll, if they, you know, roll a, a four on regeneration, you know, they, they're almost healing over half dial, sometimes close to top dial, and then you've got to go through them all over again. This is, whew, it's, it's getting to the point where it's really tough for any old figure to really stand a chance nowadays. And we've known about power creep for a while, but uh, still, the figures are, are very impressive. It's just at this point, man, who, who can keep up? You've got all this, you know, token, you know, the ability to remove tokens, uh, all this extra end cap in this set, and I'm guessing there's going to be a ton of assembled bots uh, I mean, Bolts and Masters and a, a ton of Avengers assembled. It's going to be a nasty set. It's going to be a real nasty set. We'll look at Quake next. Good old Daisy Johnson doing her thing. I'm sure we'll get maybe a generic, maybe we'll get a shield agent or something uh, using this pose. Uh, we'll take a look at her card real quick. She comes in at 65 points. She is set number 10. Avengers, Inhumans, Shield, Secret Warrior, and Spy. Assembled Avengers trait, the espionage trait with the stealth and the ability to ignore hindering from movement and targeting. Pinpoint earthquakes or just earthquakes. Quake. When Quake uses it, you may choose one. Choose an unoccupied square within her range. Doesn't say within line of fire. And she may use Quake as if she occupied that square or Quake can use giant reach. Uh, X, where X is her click number. So she can reach that many spaces, whatever click that she is on, that is uh, insane. That is a big time Quake power. But when using Giant Reach and Quake, uh, something I found out in a tournament not too long ago is you actually still have to have a line of fire with Giant Reach because she is a normal size. She's not giant size or colossal size, so she can't see over anybody. So keep that in mind when you're using that Giant Reach power and trying to Quake. All right, last one. Let's here, we'll look at the figure first. Yeah, you can see the, you can see the white uh, gloves and web shooters there. You can see the white Spider-Man insignia. We'll go top down here for a second, see if we can get a better look. Yeah, look at that. The detail. 
He is a super rare. The fact that this Peter Parker showed up makes me so incredibly happy. Uh, he comes in at 85 points, Spider-Man team ability. You've got uh, Spider-Man family, celebrity, police, and scientist keywords comes in at set number 52. Spider-Sense, super senses, but succeeds on a four to a six, protected outwit. He's got stealth mode or fight mode. At the beginning of your turn, you may turn Spider-Man's dial to the same click number of a different color. If you do, heal him one click. So he's got a split dial, apparently, which we'll see on the back here. Taking out Fisk's operations, one hideout at a time. Sidestep and stealth, free. Place Spider-Man in a square of hindering terrain within four squares and line of fire. That is so cool. If you've played that game, you know you always have that kind of ability to escape the combat. You know, you've always got all these markers around you where you can shoot a web and shoot, zip right out of whatever that fray was. And I think that's kind of how they are, are, have done it here. You've got this free jump into hindering terrain. That's awesome. Uh, eat webbing, punk. Incapacitate. Incapacitate as free. Free incapacitate. Got a special damage power, the right gadget for the job. Free, choose one. Outwit, perplex, close combat expert, or exploit weakness. Spider-Man can use the chosen power until your next turn. There's nothing about selfies on here. That's the only thing I wish there was, is, is that you could uh, figure in some way to do stealthy, because uh, selfie mode on that game was probably like one of the coolest things. I've seen so many people out there that played the game you know, posting images of, of their coolest selfie as, as Spider-Man in the game. It would be awesome if they figured out a way to put it in this. But still, let's take a look at the back of the dial here. Does have a split dial. Now remember, when you flip back and forth, you gain a click of health back. I mean, this guy's going to be regenerating throughout the battle. Uh, you've got battle mode, of course, there. And you've got stealth mode, man. This this is wicked. I'm going to be using this character all the time. Uh, awesome. That is so cool. Ah, and if you haven't played the game, what are you waiting for? And uh, if you are if you are playing the game, uh, try and match up my voice to, to Harry Osborne, because that was that was me. That was your boy. All right, moving on. Second booster for the day. And the last one uh, that we have. Oof. Today was a little bit of a longer video. The rest of the week will be a little bit shorter because we won't have the fast forces and the token pack and everything. All right, let's see who we have here. We have another Iron Man. We have Pepper Potts, fitting that she's in a booster with her hubby. We've got Spy Master, an old Iron Man villain here. We have seen once before in Hero Clicks. We've got Peggy Carter. All right. That's really cool. And we've got a shield agent as well for a little bit of generic play there. So that's not the sculpt I thought we were going to get. That Quake might be reused for a generic. Uh, but instead, we have this shield agent. This shield agent looks kind of uh, like he could be a simple villain, uh, villain as well, like a Captain America villain. So I wonder if the other person with this... Uh, is going to be maybe a villain. Who knows? All right. So a pretty Iron Man and Shield-centric pack there. A lot of Iron Man stuff in here. Cool to see Peggy Carter. Uh, let's just go down the line. We've got a Shield Agent. A Shield Agent generic is uh, set number four. Has Shield, Soldier, Spy. Has a trait called What's My Assignment Free. Choose an adjacent friendly character with the shield keyword and a standard speed power. That character can use except hypersonic speed. Shield agent can use the chosen power until your next turn. Has that espionage shared trait. Has ICER incapacitate with two lightning bolts as a special attack power. Take a look at the back here. Oh, cool. You got a little bit of... Uh, Diversity of dial here. You can choose to play different ways. I'm guessing you choose one of those uh, at the beginning of the match. Costs 15 points. There you go. Very cool. All right. I like how you can't gain hypersonic speed. Thank you so much for signaling that out. You've got a bunch of hypersonic shield agents running around. That would be a real shame. Um, let's go with Peggy Carter next. 
Set number nine, Howling Commandos, Shield, Past, Soldier, and Spy. Comes in at 40 points. Has espionage trait. Has a special movement power. I got away with it because no one looks at me. Sidestep. Characters can't draw a line of fire to Peggy Carter unless she is adjacent to another character. Wow. Cannot draw a line of fire to her unless she is adjacent to another character. Friendly or opposing, I believe. Does not uh, specify. At the beginning of your turn, you may deal Peggy Carter one unavoidable damage. Why would you do that? Let's take a look at the back of the card here and see why. Um, oh, she's got that kind of starter click. That's when she really springs into action, it looks like. Uh, if you take that unavoidable click, you get onto running shot with an 11 attack, three damage without wit. So that's kind of cool. You kind of slowly walk her into position. You get her ready to go. And then when she gets running shot, if you look at the card, the name of the power is Now I Go to Work. So you can walk her around the board with that special movement power, get her into whatever position you need. She can't be targeted. And then... Boom, you go. That's awesome. I really love that power, actually. Um, that's something new and fresh. WizKids, still surprising to this day with all these special powers. All right, we're going to move into Spymaster, take a close look at the character, that figure real quick. Um, we'll go top down just because he's got his little insignia on the chest. It's easier to see it from the top down. You know, pretty simple. Take a look at the card real quick. We've got AIM, Hammer Industries, Magia, Zodiac, and Spy keywords. And uh, we're at set number 25, 65 points to play. He's got espionage. Everybody has this espionage. Everybody's got stealth in this set. It's going to be hard to target anybody. Uh, my espionage elite is another trait during game setup when establishing themed teams, you may treat the spy keyword as a named keyword. Ooh, that's cool. That's really cool. You can run a group of spies as a themed team that is actually a named theme, not just a generic theme. That's really awesome. Unique modifier. Friendly characters with the spy keyword modify defense by plus one if occupying, hindering, or obscuring terrain. Awesome. Uh, you've got a special attack power, anti-Iron Man weapons. Choose a standard attack power. Spymaster can use that power until your next turn. This is a much better version of Spymaster than we had in the past. That's pretty rad. Sidestep all the way down. Of course, with the espionage trait, you're getting sidestep and stealth. Um, a lot comes with that, and you're going to be able to get in and out of hindering terrain with that espionage cell. You, you can target into hindering terrain. You can... It's... It's... That espionage trait is pretty dang good. All right, we've got two left. Take a look at both Iron Man and Pepper Potts next to each other because I feel that's the way we should do it. We've got a different armor here for Iron Man, different paint job, different time frame. Let's look at Pepper Potts' card first. We've got set number 32 for Pepper Potts with keywords Avengers and Stark Industries. She has played at 25 points. She has proof that Tony Stark has a heart as a trait. Once per turn for all characters with this trait, when a friendly character named Iron Man makes an attack, you may re-roll a 1 or a 2. If the re-roll is a 6, heal both Pepper Potts and that Iron Man one click. Oh my god. So not only is the Iron Man in this set pretty cool, that first one that we saw, uh, if you put Pepper Potts on the board, he's got a little battery coming from her. His own little form of probability control can reroll ones and twos, and if uh, a six comes up on that reroll, you get to heal them both a click. She's only 25 points, so she's worth it as a little bit of a, a solo pit crew for Iron Man. Uh, that's pretty great. Uh, look at the back of the card here. She's got a little stealth up front. She's got energy shield deflection to protect herself. She's got Perplex as well as outlet, Outwit Late Dial. That is 25 points well spent for sure. All right, now this Iron Man, this, sil this silver centurion kind of looking Iron Man here. Let's see what we've got. We've got Avengers, Stark Industries, Armor, and Scientist, set number 35. Comes in at 75 points. Ah, just like the other Iron Man because you've got this shifting focus I am Iron Man trait. Free, if Iron Man began your turn on the map, replace him with another character with this trait. Has the Aven Assembled Avengers trait, 
has variable, variable weapon system as a trait. Free. Choose a standard attack power printed on the card of a character with the shifting focus I am Iron Man trait on your sideline. Iron Man can use the chosen power this turn. So you don't even have to shift them out. You can just grab powers from the sideline. Ugh. Oh, man. Variable weapon system indeed. It's got some stealth there on the front. Superior Iron Man armor looks so cool um, in this particular piece. It's painted really, really well. Um, stealth, outwit. Ugh. This Iron Man's going to be nasty. Going to be nasty. And Iron Man in this set is going to be very difficult to deal with because now you're just grabbing powers off of the sideline. Well, there we go. Uh, day one, up and down. All right. I think we know what we've got some subsets of here. We're going to have a lot of Masters of Evil. We're going to have a lot of Thunderbolts, I think, in the days to come. This Living Legend shared trait, I think, means we're going to see a lot of different, very iconic uh, characters within the Marvel Universe uh, getting a boost and uh, staying on the board a little bit longer just because of what they have earned over their time, uh, both in the comics world and by us as fans of the books. Um, it's kind of like uh, Fables-esque to me. Uh, to borrow from, from the old uh, comic book run by Bill Willingham, uh, the more you believe in this fairy tale character, the harder they are to kill. And that's kind of, to me, what this living legend uh, version is kind of like borrowing from, is that they are living legends both by us as readers really powering them because of the belief that we have in them, but also in the real world, in, in, the, in the 1601, in the, in the Marvel universe there. So uh, that's awesome. Uh, all right. I think that is uh, all we've got for today. Uh, once again, pre-releases start on January the 22nd. So go to your local brick and mortar shop, your local comic store, find out when they're going to be holding those and support those shops. Buy your cases there. Buy your bricks there. Make sure you support those local stores. They are the lifeblood of games like HeroClix, and we love each and every one of them. Uh, find out when you can get your hands on these figures, and we will get to work, huh? Um, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back tomorrow and through the end of the week to do four more of these unboxing series. So make sure you come back. Once again, from Hyper RPG Studios, this is Scott Porter. I will see you tomorrow. And until then, may all your roles be critical hits.